Hello, I'm Josephine Sellers, and I'd like to welcome you back to the Awakening TV channel. Today, I'm interviewing my friend and colleague, John Wilkes. John Wilkes is a craniosacral therapist and bone therapist. He works in Somerset and Dorset. He runs work workshops on working with mothers and babies, and has taught in both Europe as well as the USA and Australia. And today we're filming him at the Glencairn House Clinic in Sherbourne, Dorset, where he works. Hello, John. Thank you. Hi. Good to see you here Thank today. You. Good. Fascinating subject, birthing incarnation. It's a huge subject. It's actually. fast. So yeah. I've got a great long list of questions. So yeah. we'll roll into them and see okay. what happens. Okay. So the big one I want to ask you to start with is, why do we in our culture view birth and pregnancy as a medical condition or problem? Yeah, it's very difficult. I mean, I, I suppose it's happened over the years. I mean, we could, we could probably blame, was it Louis XIV? <laughs> or, okay. You know, it, all, it, it started, I think a, a lot of what's happening now is, is very much a social thing, R rather than necessarily, you know, if you look at how, uh, how, how babies are born in hospitals, yes. and, and, you, and you look at, a lot of it is not really evidence-based. You know, it's, it's sort of stuff that's happened over the years. I mean, for example, uh, women giving birth on their back, which, yes. which really all started with Louis XIV, because he had this yeah. sort of fetish yeah. about uh, yeah. women's yeah. legs and so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, know that story. Oh, well, that's where it's but, come but, from, has it? Yeah. We and have him so, okay. uh, so we got um, one of my questions was about birthing in hospitals. It is yeah. pretty standard, isn't it? Well, it's not. That, that's the thing, because as you say, I do, I do a lot of teaching over, over, overseas and also in the UK, mm -hmm. and you find actually it varies a lot from place to place. Oh, you know, from, yeah. from yeah. different county, different yeah, county, even yeah. towns. And, and certainly when you go abroad to Europe and mm -hmm. America, it changes a lot from place to place, okay. how, how they do it. Can you elaborate I mean, a little bit for me? Yes, <laughs> I mean, um, for example, well, take something simple, the cesarean rate, for example. And if you look at various countries, like mm. um, in Holland, Holland, it's quite low and, and the home birth rate is very high. But Which actually, to me they, sounds quite good. Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's very good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, and actually, they have less complications in in places like Holland, where they have high uh, home birth rate, than they do where it's more medicalized, like in the United States, where it's very, very medicalized. Mm. Um, yes, yeah, so, I mean, if you look at if you look at cesareans. Uh, again, you know, I was saying it was a social, partly well, a social absolutely. thing. Absolutely, it's huge. A lot of people opt for them. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was talking to I was talking to uh, one of the senior advice in the Royal College of Advice last year, and she was saying now in London, it's forty five percent of all first births, first mums, are cesareans. No, what? Massive. Well, why are and they going? Are they trying to avoid pain of first birth, or is it well, a, a cosmetic? What is it? Or is it planning so think, it around their busy social life? Well, I think it's partly that. It's partly social because, because like, <clears throat> the, the magazines tend to promote um, caesareans as being a good thing. It, it's not promoted as something that is, like, serious it's abdominal surgery. surgery. Know, it is, it's it's like, you, if you talk to a mum about, oh, I'm just going to have a caesarean, yeah. uh, they say, well, it's sort of routine, isn't it? They don't really think that it's it the ramifications. It? And, and so, so for the mum, there are, <clears throat> there are ramifications. Also for the baby, I'll talk about that a bit yes, later. Okay. But there are specific ramifications right. for the baby as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you look at it overall, o over the world, um, you know, in China, it's very high, I suppose, because they have the, the one baby policy, don't they, in China. Yeah. So a lot of mums, I think it's something like nearly 50% of them opt for caesareans. Yeah. In Brazil, yeah. you see where they're very concerned about their figures and stuff, it's something like 90%. In some oh. cities, it's like 90% of the sub But it's so of. unnatural. <clears throat> and then here, as I say, like in the country where we are, mm. it's more like 33%, a, a which is still very it's high. It's still high. Yeah, so... I mean, in the yeah. early years ago, I was just purely for emergency. Mm. Indeed. And... Um, yeah, and, and then it, and it, and it also goes up, for example, if you have um, someone like Sarah Jessica Parker or, or <laughs> Victoria Beckham, you know, they always have caesareans. And of course, that's always all, all over the big... So that magazines. encourages other people. And you find the rate goes way yeah. up, up just after yeah. that. Yeah. Same thing with surrogate, I think. A couple of them have been surrogate, haven't they, recently? And then have they? The whole okay. fad for being surrogate moms has gone up. Yeah, so there's a lot of that social okay. Okay. thing that's happened, yeah. Yeah. and and also I think I think the big thing is that it's not. That there's a lack of information 
for, for mums, which is very sad, about why, you know, w what happens actually. And, and, and also, um, there is a whole thing that happens, for example, when mums are induced. And again, that's not really talked about. I mean, you've had children, haven't you? Yes, so and I've, I've had one induction. You've had induction. And yes, not very it was nice. it was pretty grim actually, yeah, and it was horrible. the first child. And and, right. and I I want I'm interested in, in the implications of that. So, well, as you as you experienced that, it's very rough. You probably have experienced this quite sort of it's, rough because it's, because it's very the, severe. The, yeah, because the contractions yes, are, are, are yes, stronger. Yes, absolutely. And and probably yeah. feels a little bit out of control. Yeah. And um, and also for the baby, I mean, I find because as a craniosacral therapist, yeah. I see a lot of babies, yeah. and the babies that are being induced are are more difficult to treat. They tend to be more uh, fractious and more difficult to settle. Mm -hmm. And I think probably part of that is. They've just had a rough ride. It's and a shock. Fast, yes. and, and it's out of control. I mean, there's a lot of debate about this. You know, uh, I, I mean, they know this with with certain animals like sheep, for mm -hmm. example, that 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 the the baby, yes, mm -hmm. the lamb in the womb, if you like, mm -hmm. starts. It, it, it induces the the hormones that that get the contractions going. We yes. don't really know if that's true with humans, but we probably think it is. Yeah. So in other words, there's a whole thing about well, there's a there's a right time. A baby knows the right time. That it's going to be born, you know. Mm. So, so it you could say that it probably, almost certainly, initiates the whole thing. So, if if you if if the mum's induced, that whole thing then goes Throw out, the out of the window, and they might think, oh, it's too, you know, it's too quick, too fast, too fast. Mm. Um, yeah. So there's that side of it, um, which is which is sort of more psychological, I suppose. And mm. for the mum's point of view, sorry, and 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 then also. Uh, you see, again, mums don't realise that once you start uh, inducing, once you start that process, we, we call it a cascade of intervention, and that's the key one, really, that really starts the whole cascade, which probably then will mean they have to have an epidural, because it's too painful. Mm. So then, once you've had an epidural, which then... You know, you, you're not so much in it's touch sort of, with what's going on. Yeah, it sort of reverses a process, doesn't yeah. it? And then, um, if you have an epidural, you're much more likely to have an intervention, yeah. which probably would be, might be a cesarean, or it might be forceps, or it might yeah. be something else. So, so there's high, that whole thing. One, one thing what, it's starts the, another. Yes, it's yeah. like a waterfall of events. Yeah, exactly. that. You've got yeah. to follow through. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, I, I'm going to yeah. go back to the start of my list, because we've sort of gone in a little way down. But... Yeah. Um, all extremely relevant because the question here is at what point does awareness and memory arise in the process of incarnation for a baby yeah i mean i think this is again it's an interesting thing because uh, when you when you look at when you look at how we view birth and pregnancy see i think most people think and and this is again in the common culture if you if you look at uh, programs like One Born Every Minute, which is a yeah. big hit. <laughs> We've got an American version of it now. I think like, people like, it, they like to see women <laughs> shouting and screaming. And yes, and there's so much. I mean, the, have you seen it? Well, I've, a, I've tuned in a couple of times halfway through. It's pretty loud and. Yeah, and and so, there's so much disconnection. And there's trauma. It all seems yes. very. And fractious between parents and. Yeah, you know, and, there's, and the men are most of portrayed as completely useless. Yes. <laughs> yes. Really the women are letting rip at them. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so, so, uh, uh, yeah, so, so back, back to the question, what, yeah. time, what point does awareness and memory arise in the child? What's going on for the baby? Yes, what, what I want to say is that, is that, you see, most people have this thing that, that is somehow that, uh, I suppose a baby is kind of a, a blank slate, almost. Like when, you know, when, when a baby is, um, um, in, well, when, when it's conceived... Well, that was it, one of my questions about it, it's sort of yes. a yeah. almost a mechanical process of a fusion between an egg and a sperm. Yeah. And then maybe something begins to happen in terms of its, you know, some sort of personality developing. But, but even, even in terms of of the whole process of pregnancy and and birth, we still, generally speaking, don't consider that the fetus is in any way conscious. Okay. Do you know what I mean? That's, yes, I, I would do. tell you that's the general. Yes. Feeling and 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 even till quite recently, the fact that a, that a baby, when it, even when it's born, is not really no that, that it's an conscious. entity in its own self. It's, yes, it's, it has a presence. Yes, and, and really, I think that's why the whole 
why we've gotten to this mess. Mechanical we process. Yeah. We haven't appreciated the fact that actually a baby is incredibly conscious. I mean, mm. and that's the question is, well, where does that start? But mm. certainly uh, the baby at, at birth is incredibly yeah. conscious. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of cases of, of, of people being regressed and then you know, knowing exactly what the situation was at their birth, yes. who, what the mum was feeling, yeah. you know, what the dad was feeling, yeah. who was in the room. I mean, it's very exact. And, and you know, a lot of babies can even them. feel guilt at, at, if a mum's had a difficult birth or been in pain. You know, I know it sounds odd, but, but babies can feel all kinds of well, emotions, like, like guilt that. and things that they've hurt their mum. Yeah. And, 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 and a really big thing actually is around, um, around expectation as well. You know, what, when we, we, we talk about the, the, when a baby's born, the first thing, you know, it's coming from an environment which is completely enclosed and safe if you mm. like well not necessarily safe it might not necessarily it may not it have been safe, safe. No. but it, it's certainly going into a situation where it's seen for the first time yeah you know and then and so that's a very powerful thing like and all the expectations of the mum and the mm. so in terms of of where when consciousness comes in, in. It, it's uh I mean, there's a guy called David Chamberlain. I don't know if you come across. He wrote a lovely book quite a few years ago, about ten years ago, called "The Mind of Your Newborn Child," mm. which is wonderful. And he's done another one recently, which is which is talking about how consciousness um, evolves okay. in the womb, yeah. which is really, really beautiful. Yes, I'm quite interested um, in pre-birth stuff too, yeah. and what's going around yeah. with the parents at the time, and and the environment where the child is carried. You know? Yeah, exactly. And we, and we don't tend to concentrate so much yeah. now. We tend to look at birth, because birth is such a powerful yes. thing. But, but, you know, a lot of prenatal psychologists would say that that period of, from conception and through the first three months of the child being in the womb is kind of a key thing. Yeah. You know, and again, there's not really a, an awareness about it. I mean, a colleague of mine was saying the other day, it's a bit, if you imagine... A situation where you were, you were lying in a bed and you were, say, in a hospital or something, and you were being fed. So you couldn't speak, so mm. you were being fed through tubes, and mm. you know, waste was being taken away. And mm. you know, mm. but you were you were completely mm. conscious, but you you couldn't say anything. Mm. And the people around you, your family, mm. you know, were talking about, oh, I'm not sure if we want this person yeah. to live anymore. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, um, it's grim it's, stuff. It's like all, it all that things because a lot of a lot of mums, a lot of dads have have an ambivalence about whether they wanted to be pregnant. I mean, I, I have, you know, to see a lot of um, both babies now and adults, mm. and 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 they know, for example, that maybe they weren't wanted, or they, or their or their mum was yeah. ambivalent about it. Mm. You know, so. It seems from from the sort of work that I do, and I'm sure that you do, and you're aware of, that there is a consciousness that comes in very early, and that that fetus, even you know, at um, a week or probably, or, you know, mm. uh, certainly through the months of the pregnancy, it is is incredibly aware of what's going on, mm. and uh, I mean, we know that babies can hear. And, Mm. and understand mm. um, for me from my perspective psychological perspective where I work it's, it's soulful stuff really yeah it's soulful stuff yeah yeah yes so again culturally there's not really you know if we if we knew that we would we would handle it such a different way <laughs> you know yeah, we would I, never have no, a discussion about whether yeah, at three months of a, into a pregnancy, whether we really want this child, or those sort of things, or whether we want a boy or a girl. Know. You know what I mean? If because it feels sad. It feels quite yes. tragic, doesn't it? <laughs> it is because it is we would sad. never do it if we if we. If no, we well, I just and, and you don't do it in other cultures. In okay. other cultures, it's not done. You know, and, and there's Give me much some more... cultures. Are you talking more Eastern cultures or? Um, well, particularly sort of some of the older, yes, uh, sort of you know um, South American cultures mm. and uh, and um, some of the older. Possibly. So, so, do they have? Would you say they have a more? Um, I, well, this is my stuff, really saying it's a more spiritual mm. approach to birth. You know, this is a, this is a, this is something special coming, and it it, it deserves respect. Yes, I, I, 
historically that's been the case. Yes. But our again our medicalisation of yes. birth is, is Western now culture take, taking over massively, yes. isn't it? Yes, so, it is indeed. So we're sort of take, getting lost taking now. that beautiful side out of it, really. But in yeah. so treading with hobnail boots through the birthing process, it sounds like. To yes. Me. Yeah. And, and, and there's a lot of awareness in other cultures about welcoming. Yes. You know, welcoming. Yes. Uh, uh, and even when, you know, with pregnant women, they'll put yeah. their hands on the belly and say, yeah. oh, you're, yes. you're really yes. welcome. And, and that's you know, the, you're I've really always... so looking forward to seeing you. <laughs> I thought and, that's and, beautiful. <laughs> and that's a sense of awareness. And then seeing the babies yeah. for the first time, someone's been really yeah. looking into its eyes and, and giving it this welcome into Absolutely. the world. And that, and that I understand from a psychological perspective, that that's vital. It's huge. It's, huge. it's just yeah. look welcome, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's a life. Yeah. And that can be done through the, yes. through the pregnancy. And yes. that's another culture yeah. thing, it's a big yeah. thing. But we yeah. don't tend to do that. You know, if we, we don't tend to go to the street. And no. Say, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, so we both, oh, I, this, what happens at implantation? I'm quite interested. So we're going really back to the conception yeah, yeah. and... So implantation is where, so the, the egg is fertilised and, and it comes yes. down slowly. Yes, it? yeah. And it, and it kind of drops off and then yeah. hopefully yeah. it'll implant in yeah. the wall of yeah. the uterus. So really, that is a point where, um, if you like, the, the fetus, I don't like the word fetus, the baby, no, the if baby, you want, yes, yeah. uh, gets a taste of the mum. Do you know what I mean? At that it, it, point, it, it, it fuses it, into the lining. Yes, and, and, and it starts to sp- receive from mum and give yeah. back to mum. So this is two-way. It gets a real sense of where mum is at yes. physically and emotionally. It's yeah. a very intimate thing. Huge. And if you think about it, you know, when the when the, because we connect through here. Yeah. And so many people hold stuff here, don't they? Yeah. It's history. A big, it's a big area. History. And it's all to do with connection. And yeah. so we're we are we are we are receiving. Yeah. We're receiving masses of information yes actually. and obviously emotion and, and, and all the stuff that's essential for our survival that's yeah. that's also it's yeah. very yeah. you know it's just primal mm. because we need mum mm. to survive but mm. but at the same time we have we have all the good stuff and mixed in with that there might be other stuff you know what i mean yeah emotional emotional mixed with the life tension, force of whatever's body. going yes yeah. all, yeah. all that Hopefully she's not smoking, but you know what I mean. <laughs> or anything, or, or, drinking, toxic things, or, or anything else. Yeah, but yeah. you know, there's toxicity yes, in, in all yeah, kinds of levels, yes, emotional yeah, levels. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and and really, from uh, at that point, and for the few months after, if you uh, you can kind of get a sense of it that this connection is massive. You know, mm. I mean, it's huge physically. It's mm. it's like it would fill yeah. here. It's massive. Yeah. So um, so it's a very intimate, a very powerful place and um it's creation isn't it yeah it's, it's creation yeah it's and, fusing and off it all, all around sparking off it's yeah and I, I think a lot of people have then in terms of later issues ar- around this area uh are, are to do with receiving you know obviously receiving connection intimacy mm-hmm. all those things i mean money is a big thing because money nowadays we see money as al- almost like we need it almost like we need yeah. food and and yeah. and our lifeblood you know yes. what I mean? that we a lot of people have that relationship with money that if and, that, and then if if they don't get it yeah. it's like oh, I feel it here. panic yes exactly so it's a threat so to life in itself it, really people Feels, feel like yeah that's they? a yes i think that's people very interesting like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, fascinating, John. Right. Yeah, so um, so that's a big thing, and and quite interesting because that because I've done a lot of work with this myself, and and it's sort of like an ongoing process for me as well. There's some very interesting people working in this field now who kind of map it, and they and and they map it in terms of the way that people uh, their, their body language when they're talking about these issues later in life. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're able to map the body language and stuff. So, uh, for example, the place of implantation yeah. is, is, is here. Okay. So quite often people will put their heads on their head like this. When they're talking about that sort of time, they'll quite often talk about so there might because be, that's where it is. Okay, it so what are we saying? That there might be quite a lot of angst going on uh, for the mother at that time or, f- or the father? Or the well, husband? it could be. Could be. I mean, okay. they could so be the, fantastic. So they, but, you know, but, well, they, would they not be banging their head then? <laughs> <laughs> yes, maybe. Yes, maybe. 
<laughs> but uh, I mean, people like William Emerson, uh, there's quite a lot of other people who've talked, to, uh, written a lot about this, I and mean, there's a lot on the web. You can okay, so we show in our later body language. Oh, absolutely, hundred percent. If you if you know what to look for, you can see at what period of, of incarnation the problems or the trauma may have been. Yeah, through, and particularly when it comes to birth, where, for example, people got stuck. How fascinating. Where they got stuck, or where Great. they were, yeah, they get stuck, yeah. there's usually panic in this one. You know, ah. so yes, you can you can you can see that, and certainly in, in sort of clinical circle work, you can see it too. Um, okay. And and that's the other thing, you know. Uh, again, it would be lovely if we could bring more awareness, mum's awareness, into uh, it, 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 sort of like being able to see how babies are trying to communicate with them. Because because a lot of time, for example, you know, if a baby is upset. Yes, birth, yes, yeah. Oh, they are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the first few months can be quite fractious. Yeah, and so, and oftentimes they're trying to communicate yeah. about what happened, what's up. I mean, they might be just physically in pain, yeah. they've got a headache or something, but quite often also they'll want to try and understand. Expand. Yes, yes. And, and, and be heard, because that's the key thing, you know, if you can be heard. Yes. It helps heal it, doesn't yeah. it? Yes. So the baby is giving body language off at that early stage about yeah. wanting to be heard, trying to communicate to the mother. Yeah, exactly. I think when we when we put this interview up, it would be a very good idea to have some book titles up there, John. Yeah, sure. With some of this really succinct information in. There's a lot of very good stuff. There. So I think that really would be a stuff. really helpful thing. Yeah. Um, we, I'm trying to see get the questions in some sort of. Um, yeah, sorry, probably. Or, or, <laughs> Um, I, I, we're talking about. I quite like the idea of talking about home births. Home births. Yes. Yes. Because I had one induced birth. hospital horrific birth and one home birth. Yeah, yeah. And they were very different processes. Yeah. So, Completely different. Yes, yes, but it's yeah. not in in this kind of number one. There aren't the facilities or enough midwives, are there, to allow as many home births as people would want? No, and a lot of midwives don't have experience of it, so they're a little bit frightened of it. You know, so they, they so tend big, to try and steal yeah, people that's also, yeah. because, so, I so mean, you've got you know, some backup well, yeah and, and you know there's a big litigation uh, factor at the moment as yeah. well so mm-hmm. I mean when, when hospitals look at safety you see that's the other thing um, um, they, they would tend to go for the safest option okay. and, and the things that will come we can back, understand actually, we, we live understand. in a society and, of litigation <laughs> yeah and also you know um, private midwives yes uh, are few and far between yes. now. Yeah. and um it will. It looks like within a couple of years they won't be able to get insurance anymore, and then they won't be able to. Practice. What do you feel about that? What do you? Practice. What's your feeling about home births, John? Well, I think, I think, I think the you know it, it's a fantastic thing, and it's much more nurturing, as you know. Yeah. Um, and, and 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 even I mean, it's again, it's sad. It's about education. If people realised actually that may, to have a baby at home is probably way safer than going to hospital. Okay, but elaborate Elaborate on that, John. Well, it, it, partly to do with this whole cascade of intervention yes, that we, that we yeah, talked about. Yeah. But statistically, mm-hmm. you know, if you look at Holland, you look mm-hmm. at other places, mm-hmm. uh, as we were saying, like, like um, in, in terms of the, you know, um, possibility of complications or, or even of, of severe complications to the mum and the baby, mm-hmm. you are safer generally um, at home. And um, so, so... But we don't encourage it, no. so which is which is really sad, mm. you know. Mm. And, and unfortunately, even in Holland, it's going the other way now. Mm. So that percentage is going down. Yes, I'm, I'm quite interested in the subject of um, during the birth, birthing process when you have these huge interventions at the end, maybe suction yeah. and forceps. Yeah, and that that almost in the context of this conversation <laughs> feels almost barbaric. <laughs> well, yes, and again, it's really interesting. Um, there's so many different things that can that can happen, aren't there? In that cascade of events. Yes. 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 Uh, <laughs> I, I sort of, I'm cringing in my seat. <laughs> I know, I'm a female. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, obviously. Um, I mean, it's a big subject. Let, let's take um, let's take suction. Yes. So sometimes called von Tuss, Yeah. That's used a lot. I mean, again, you see. It's used in about ten percent of all births now in the UK, which is quite a high percentage, it's isn't high. it? Yes, it is high. And 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 it's used probably more than it's it's really needed. Mm. Again, because of the fear of litigation and the fear of 
you want to get a baby out get quickly. Get out safe and quick. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And, and, and when you look at safety, you're talking about, uh, you see, because like, they, they used to use forceps much more. Yes. But the things that they would measure in terms of safety, well, you can do quite a lot of damage with, with forceps. You have to be very skilled with forceps. Okay, what sort of yeah. damage can you do with forceps? Well, well, you, well um, you're going, I mean, you often go crashing on the head, don't Well, you? from a cranial point, point of view, view you're, you're, you're grabbing... Grabbing hold here. of soft tissue, really, isn't it? That well, yes, the baby's cranium is very, mm. is very soft. Mm. And the top part is mm. very soft. So there's a lot of stuff that can go on there. But... but um, but looking at statistics, I mean, again, because hospitals go on statistics, and so they will look at using um, von Tuch rather than forceps yeah. because what they would say is that it creates less intracranial pressure. So in other words, less squeezing on the baby, which is potentially dangerous. But on the other hand, you see what the what they don't look at, and I've talked to a lot of obstetricians like that about this, and I try and corner them as much as I can, you know. And and, and actually, it's very interesting because most of them will say. That uh, and they, these are guys who've delivered a lot of babies yeah. using mm. using mm. uh, Tuse actually, mm. and they'll say, "Oh wow, gosh, that's really interesting, John. I've never even thought about oh. that." And so what we're looking at is, for example, when you attach uh, the cap, yes. uh, and it's usually attached into the back of the head, yeah. but not always. That's no. where it's supposed okay. to be attached to, yeah. and it, it's not depending on what they can get to. It's mm. supposed to be central, but it's quite often off to, off to one side. So. Uh, and, and as you probably know, most babies born that way have pretty much of a cone head. You yes. know, it really You've seen cool. it, haven't you? Yeah. You yeah. see yeah. them when they're first born. <laughs> and often it's not straight like this. No. It's off the one side. <laughs> and um, yes, and the, and the key, you see, the thing is, again, that people don't realise, most, most uh, parents who are very well educated and highly intelligent will just think of it as a procedure. They won't really think that it has any potential long-term consequences. But we know, as, I mean, all body workers know, um, osteopaths, chiropractors, people like us know, that if you distort um, stuff here, so we're talking about particularly the the, the back of the head, the occiput here, which is the back of the head, that articulates, that meets with the atlas, the top of the neck. That's a very subtle relationship. Yeah. The way the head sits on, on the, the top body. of the body. On the body, exactly. Yeah. We call it a rocker, you know. Yes. And if you're off your rocker, well, you know. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but but it, it's actually, uh, you know, in, in terms of osteopathic work, it's um, crucial for the whole balance of the body. If, yeah. if it's out here, yeah. you tend to get ramifications through, it tends to reflect in the pelvic bowl, the whole pelvis, the lower back, etc., etc., etc. And, and and suction, because it pulls here, and it often pulls off to it, it tends to distort back here. Yeah. So you see, again, what people see is the coning, which looks bad. But it usually goes down. Mm. Well, it can do with some help, to be honest, because every, every baby born that way should have some cranial work yeah. free, I think. But um, and what, what people don't see is the bit back here, which is what we call the cranial base. And the, the base of the cranium is quite, is quite bony, even at birth. This is very soft, yes. very, very soft up yeah. here. But this bit is formed from cartilage back here, mm. down here. It's quite dense, yes. so it, much, it means when you pull on it, mm. you get the distortions tend to stay. They don't tend to go back unless they're treated. So, um, you know, so that's, has, that can have kind of lifelong ramifications I'm and sure I've seen it can. I see it all the time I'm sure it can can be crick scoliosis yeah. can create much yeah. more subtle things yeah. actually yeah, yeah. Uh, than um, that um, and of course th- and th- that's just a physical ramification but then you know our, our necks our bodies <coughs> are not designed to be pulled normally in the birth process you get a lot of squeezing mm. don't you as the yeah. baby comes yeah. up there's yeah. a lot of compression yeah. this way front yes. to back a lot of dragging, yes. and of course the other thing is that as as humans, we're the only ones out of all, all the animal kingdom that do a rotation as we come down the birth canal. Yeah. If you look at most other okay. animals, they just come straight out. Okay. But we we have to do because our heads to are get too big, out, get these heads and basically out. we're born effectively nine months too early. Actually, you know, we oh. should stay in the womb. <laughs> but we'd oh. never get out, would we? <laughs> no, because our heads are too big. You don't, you don't want to think about that, do you? No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I'm already screaming. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm thinking of uh, all these things and the sore neck I've got today, but, which uh, I've suffered from most of my life. It's it, the ramifications are huge, aren't they, John? Well, yes, and this again, you see, there's not much. I mean, you, you know, you're 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 very you've been very much into this sort of work for for years. And yes. Sure some of this might be even new for you. So well, you some know, of it is, yeah. yeah. So you know, it's not out there, it's, is it? No, no, it's, it's not in the that, Daily Mail. That can, it's not. That can, no, no, that really <laughs> concerns me. But then yeah. anyone who works in the complementary field, yeah. Um, uh, know that we're very often not heard and, no, and but no, exactly. you're going on a, at a much more subtle level yes and a very important level and it's too easy in the medical profession to just just study it all scientifically yes and not yeah. look at this in-depth stuff which is vast yes. and important it is and, and that's the kind of odd thing when you look at it because actually a lot of this is researched and a lot of it is well known so do and they not yet, want to hear it well, it's a good question. I don't know. I mean, if we take, for example, we were talking about induction earlier. Yes. Now, there's some really interesting stuff, and this has been around maybe at least 10 years now, uh, looking at the use um, of uh, synthetic oxytocin, which is what they use in okay. to bring on the contractions. Yeah. Yeah, so it's yeah. pitocin or syntocin that they use. What the hell is it? Well, <laughs> it's a synthetic form of oxytocin. And we, and we know it's, oxytocin is the love hormone. Okay. Oxytocin is the love hormone. Yes. That mums gives that naturally. lovely feeling of well-being exactly. when they feed their babies. Yes, yes that it's beautiful in breastfeeding. Hormone. Okay, and it right. and it creates this lovely yes. sort of bubble, yes. which is what it's designed to yeah. do. Yeah. Because we don't. It's a beautiful natural yes. process, and, and, yeah. and that is produced in in uh, in birth as well. Yes. Mums produce in, in massive amounts because yeah. uh, yeah. it then produces this situation where they're, they're not worried about anything in the outside world. And mm. of course, you can see this in animals that they do this. Mm. They're, they're completely oblivious. Mm. They'll create themselves a lovely mm. place to give. And birth, it's a, a safe beautiful place. thing to watch. And it, it looks yeah. beautiful. Yes. It, you, you, it just something feels so right about yes. it. Yes. It's so natural. It's yeah, and and so oxytocin is very important. I mean, like like with breastfeeding, it's produced in, yes. by the mum. Yes. And and um, and I'm sure that goes through the bloodstream as well. You know, through yeah. so and and, and you know, we know, for example, that. That women who breastfeed are much less likely to get postnatal depression, almost. Yeah, because yeah. that lovely hormone is flowing. Isn't yeah, it? of well-being, really, yeah. isn't it? But in terms of use in induction, yes, um, yes. using again, that chemical, that that hormone. Yes. Now this this is very interesting, and, and I say it, it's been it has been known for at least ten years now, more actually, because there's quite a few people researching it. There was a, a lady in. Um, Chicago, mm. who I, I went to a presentation a couple of years ago, called Sue Carter, and she's been researching the use of oxytocin for, well, her whole life, it's her whole life is okay. oxytocin. So plenty and, of research here. <laughs> yeah, plenty of research. Yes. And she, she was looking at it from the point of view of um, social bonding, which is very interesting. She, she studied these little prairie voles, in the, okay. which, which would form <laughs> lifelong, yeah. one of the few mammals that okay. yeah. uh, have lifelong pair bonds. Yes. yes. So once they found them, make this thing what they do, yeah. and then oh, giving them synthetic oxytocin and seeing what happens. And what did happen? Well, it's what is interesting is that it varies as to the amount of oxytocin given. Given, but high doses of oxytocin are very disruptive to forming pair bonds. Now, if you look at the practice of use of pitocin and other things, uh, so, so synthetic oxytocin, in induction in hospitals throughout the world, mm -hmm. it varies hugely. The amount that they give they, and the yeah. way it's done. Administered, yeah. The way it's done. So in other words, if, you, if the mum is uh, given high doses of uh, synthetic oxytocin, to induce labour, mm. it has a lifelong effect on the baby's ability to create pair bonds. It's not something that's temporary, and, and I know this is quite shocking. It is, that and, is and, horrific. And, and it, you know, I know if you've had, you know, people are watching this and they've had yeah. inductions because many have. There's no need no need to feel guilty about no, well, it no. because there's you know there's there's a lot one can do about it but it's still something people should know that that it does have uh, an effect and, and we know i mean there's been studies in um there's quite a, a big study about 10 years ago in colorado 
looking at a huge number of, of um, mums uh, throughout the United States uh, and looking at induction and the use of um, synthetic oxytocin. And there's a clear correlation between babies that are induced and things like ADHD. That's absolutely clear. Mm. And again, you see, you don't hear about this sort of thing. Why don't we hear about it, John? Well, because I think, and I don't know, I mean, see, I, I think because the health... The way that the hospitals are run, the, the, the whole way um, of medicalization of birth, and uh, it, it's, it's, like a, it's like a huge tanker. You know what I mean? It's so difficult. Once, it, once it's on a track, it's so difficult to change it. Things have to happen slowly because there's so many different things It's like in a place. conveyor belt. It is a little bit. It like conve- feels like factory farming. Yeah. Almost. And also, it'd be very difficult, wouldn't it, for... For midwives, for obstetricians, saying, yeah. "Oh my God, we've made a terrible mistake. Yeah. We, we should never have been doing this. Uh, yeah. We didn't realise this." And actually, this research has been out for a good fifteen years now. He never even took it seriously. Or you know what I mean? To me, it feels it, like a tsunami um, of disaster. To be quite honest, you know, these yeah, lives that, have to be led afterwards, and all the ramifications. We're making society t- ten times more complicated, and maybe seemingly on the surface dysfunctional than it needs to be. Yeah, and I mean, if again, if you read people like David um, Chamberlain, he's written a, a lot about this, um, this, he's one of many, really, but, um, uh, and people, people like Michel O'Donnell, you know, he, he writes a lot about mm. the, the, you know, uh, relationship between birth and, um, and problems in our society, particularly mm. violence. Uh, and, and that sort of thing. I mean, David Chamberlain says that you know the roots of violence in our society can be seen in the delivery room, and uh, I mean that's quite extreme. But for the baby, it it is a uh, a pretty violent thing. Unfortunately, for the majority of babies now. I mean, for example, you would think. <clears throat> you see, most people think cesareans. Yeah. They think, oh, it's so much easier. Yes, for the mom. that it's was so my next question. The baby. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> what about what are the well, ramifications of cesarean birth? Well, this you see, it's never one thing. There's lots of things. Uh, uh, for the for the mum, it's major abdominal surgery. Um, you know, which and and and, and you know, what well, well, we know, there's a lot of nerve endings down here that affect up here. You know, it's not a simple thing. There's more oh, connections no, no. from here. Yeah to the brain yeah. than there are between yeah. the two halves of the brain, you know, neuro- neurologically. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very important centre for us. Yeah. Um, so there's that side. For the baby, um, again, I mean, it's quite interesting, this is, again, not, not very well known, but um, when the baby, the, the baby's immune system is very much influenced by the mums. Yeah. Now, part of that is, obviously, a lot of that is coming through the umbilicus, yeah? And, uh, and, and, and the mum's immunity will be affected by all kinds of things. Her own exposure to antibiotics, for example. Mm-hmm. Her use of the pill, mm-hmm. for example, mm-hmm. would affect it. And then when the baby comes down the birth canal, most people don't realise, but actually a lot of, it, uh, of their baby's immunity is picked up from the various... Um, you know, flora and stuff in the vagina when okay. the baby comes down. It actually okay. picks up a lot so of stuff there. So it's picking up its immunity, its immune as system it as down. it's being born through yeah. the birth canal. Okay. Yeah, so obviously it, in caesarean yeah. birth, it, it They're going to miss out on some of their immunity, possibly. Yes. yes. Because they've not gone through the natural birth. Of course, yes. sometimes and, and a caesarean course, is life-saving and it, it just absolutely. has to happen. Absolutely. Uh, you, you'd have a dead child. But, no, 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 absolutely. But it's the, it's the more social yeah. caesareans that run the risk of... Yeah, and then uh, and we haven't really talked about early you know use of antibiotics, but but um, again um, for a mum who's given birth with cesarean, she's more likely to be ha- have to have antibiotics. Yeah, yeah. A lot of mums do because yeah. of the you know Surgery, might be infection. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and if she's breastfeeding, then that will go to the baby. Now, that has big ramifications. I mean, there's a whole raft of stuff which is quite controversial, yeah. as you probably know, <laughs> around uh, around that, uh, which is uh, how uh, how baby's immunity is affected by early use of antibiotics. Generally speaking, it's not a good idea. We can do a lot of good stuff with probiotics with babies and you know the mum can take them, the baby can yes. take them and that's really important, that can help. So maybe um, we need to move in to what you can do <laughs> after school. Yeah, Some yeah, of yeah. this sounds quite 
depressing yeah. Yeah. and worrying. Well, yeah, and I don't mean it to be, because there is a lot you can do. Yes. But just to come back to caesareans, um, again, most people would think, well, that's uh, not stressful for the baby. Yeah, how, yes. what, how, what is the effect of But, the baby? you see, the thing is that people don't realise uh, that, I mean, in an emergency caesarean, mm. well, obviously you have, you have to mm. do it because, because mm. the... The baby's stuck, but but the, the baby, um, you know, it can sometimes take quite a lot of force to get the baby out because the baby's engaged and yeah. the head's engaged. Yes, yeah. But even with a, a, a planned cesarean, the baby still has to be pulled out, yeah. and that's one of the key things. Again, I was talking about how birth practice varies throughout the world. Mm. Um, you will find in a lot of places that when a baby is born, even normally, the, the baby will be the midwife will, will pull. On, yeah. the, on the back yeah. of the head. But certainly in, in caesareans, they have to. Yeah. So the baby's often, you know, they reach in, pull, pull, pull the baby by the neck. Now, um, physiologically, the, baby, uh, the baby's neck is not designed for pulling. It's designed for, if you imagine normal birth, you get a lot of, oh, yeah, this yeah, sort of thing, yeah. pushing, pushing, pushing. Yeah. Um, but in, in that situation where it's pulled, it's, there's traction, it's pulled, yes. Yeah. So if you, uh, as an as an adult, if if someone pulls your head, mm. what we tend to do is this crunch down because yeah. because it's such a vulnerable area. I and mean, this is why things like whiplash later on is, is yeah. crucial because because we have to protect instinctively. We have to protect this area because it's where all the nuclei that control our autonomic function live back here. So we we will instinctively do mm. that mm. to to mm. protect it. Mm. And then when we do that. We also pull up here through yeah. these muscles, yeah, deep muscles, and which are our, yeah. yeah. So we pull up here, and that pulls on the diaphragm. So we do this, yeah. And you see babies when they're when they're born. If you through cesareans, if you watch what they do, yeah. they do this. Right? Okay. See, okay. see, so that pulling up, and and what tends to happen, you know, birth really is our first. It's such a powerful imprinting it's it's like before that we've been in the womb we might have got stuck but but basically we can move around it's flowing safe yeah and then and then this thing about being born it's it's such a powerful physical imprinting you know babies feel things very physically don't they mm. you know what i mean they're not intellectually no, think about it. No. They, they just feel, feel it through in the their cells body, of their body. Their yeah. cells and that go that memory goes into those cells exactly and is held it tends to be held, and we tend to, as adults, we tend to go back into those patterns when we get stressed. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see it, that's why... Curl up in a fetal ball. Yes. Oh. Well, like, the whole conversation is making me go <laughs> like this at the moment, yeah, so yeah. I need to look into all this one day, well, John. Where are you talking about the positive but, uh, I want, I, The other thing I want to talk about is the cutting of the cord. Sure. Yes, and, uh, and again, um, sorry to come, to come back to this, but... <laughs> Again, you know how? Wh why does that vary? Well, that's it to varies do with from birth. Yeah, but why does it vary from hospital to hospital? Why? Yes. Why do they? In some hospitals, they'll cut it immediately. Why in other places they leave? You know, a good few minutes to yeah. stop. Let it yeah. stop. What's that about? Well, I don't have no idea. I mean, <laughs> why do, I mean, why? Thought you were going to tell me. <laughs> no, you know, like in Dorchester, they're fantastic. They 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 have this policy of of allowing that the cord to stop pulsating and obviously I mean well you see again this has been known for donkey's years when the baby comes out yeah. it has to go from getting oxygen etc yeah. from the mum has to go into lung breathing pretty quick oh. you know it's a big transition it's huge yeah and there's various other things that have to happen there's that little hole there's a foramen in the heart yeah. which has to close yes. over to that there's something that has to happen in the liver to change in the bladder and all that has to happen you know in a few minutes really so, so it's not a good thing to rush it. No. So if you cut it too fast, it's like ooh, the body has to go and has to has to have shock really, yeah, and some really functions here. may not have completely finished. Yes, and and I mean there might be reasons why the, they have to do it. So it's not, you know, there could be good reasons why they've got to get the baby. They've got to put it, you know, it's yeah. got to give oxygen or whatever. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. You know, but but in in the normal course of events, it, it should be. And in fact, actually, there was some uh, um, guidelines that came out, I think, from the Royal College of Midwives fairly recently. And it was only on the radio last year, I was into, mm. to them talking about it, how now they're suggesting that, unless there's a very good reason not to, they should wait. Um, but it was a kind of random three minutes, mm. which is like, 
I, don't, I can't remember if it was three minutes, but something like that. But why three minutes? I mean, it's just like, it's going to vary. It might be ten. Mm. And, and, and you can see it. It's not, it's not difficult mm. when it stops pulsating and you mm. can cut it. Okay. But, you know, I suppose there's a, a need in the hospital to move things along, the next person's going to come in, whatever, you know, whatever it is. Um, so, uh, yes, and that, I'm sure that has... Ramp, well, it definitely has health ramifications, but also, and, uh, you know, we've been in the, that environment for nine months of giving and receiving through. Mm. You know, it's a big thing of connection, you know, with yeah, mum. It's and huge. That, it'd be yeah. nice if that was paced a, a bit shock, more. And, and not a shock, really. a, yeah. a gentle transition. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I think I've uh, covered all the ones that are making me go like this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But I, well, I really want thought, to talk about the work, <laughs> just a little bit, uh, John, about yeah. the work you do as a craniosacral therapist and, yes. and, and with new babies and yeah. with people throughout their life because these, sure. al- although those patterns and those cellular memories are there, we can, we can always get help, can't we? Uh, yeah, and this and is the really the positive yeah, side no, of it, isn't it? That's the key thing. That all, you, you can always heal. You know, yes. that's the wonderful thing, really. All these things could be healed, mm. and especially early on. I mean, I think one, one of the things, again, why I'm really passionate about this is to, is to try and bring more, more awareness to the whole process. As we said at the beginning, it was like, well, even, even this thing um, in, in, during the pregnancy, just about being just really mm. aware that you've got, when, you know, between a husband and a wife, you now have someone else in the room with you all the time. <laughs> There's three in this relationship. Yeah, yes. Very highly yes. tuned and really yeah, tuned in and sensitive. And absolutely. What's going yeah. on? Yeah. 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 And um, and to be positive, and um, so that is healing. And I think uh, um, the mum again with a bit more awareness but just we just need knowledge john we need knowledge, exactly. we, need knowledge. We, we don't get there. given the knowledge we need, really need do no, we most of the no. time and, and one thing i i encourage mums to do a lot actually is talk i mean talk to their baby in the womb obviously yeah. you know and positive you know mm. things like how, how mm. much they're looking forward to mm. you know, etc mm. but also after birth um um, because if a baby is fractious mm. it's not settling mm. you know it can really be helpful for the mum to say and and they they get a little bit self-conscious about it mums but yeah. but you know, it's like saying well I know you know I know talk you to had, me yes, I know you had a bit of a difficult <laughs> yeah. time yes. and I know I got her but it wasn't your fault no you know it was just what happened and, yeah. and you're here now it's yeah. fantastic yeah absolutely and, you know, wonderful I know you had a little bit of a difficult time yeah. but we can sort that out yeah. and, and the baby oh yeah, but they can relax. Yeah, let because go. it is a lot of it is. Yeah. I mean, in in our work with craniosacral work, most of it, most of the key thing that we do really is is creating a space where someone feels listened to. Because when you do that, the person can relax and they just tell their story, mm. and then it settles. You know what I mean? And it resolves. Mm-hmm. So that's true of adults, and it's certainly true of babies. Yeah. And so with babies, it might not seem we're doing much at all you know we may hold their head and we may work a little bit around certain areas where they've got some distortions happening you know and that's fantastic because you can see it changing yeah. and the shape of the head might change and, and particularly one of the key areas that we look at is the, is around here which yeah. again we can pick up and it doesn't take very long and that ch- that baby knows what you're doing and why you're doing it yeah. and, and on, a, on a mental level there's a lot of the telepathic level there's a there's a there's a holding going oh, on know, and yeah, and absolutely. a releasing and and a, yeah. and um almost an apology <laughs> yeah, no, going in so it's it's yeah. very to me that's very soulful and very it's beautiful, so, beautiful and that's what it, it, it yeah, feels yeah, to me yeah. i mean i know i look at little children these days in completely different light yeah, yeah. because i've had the you know been lucky to gradually get the knowledge on board so we, we need knowledge because that gives us choice doesn't it john Absolutely. I mean, that's the key thing. That's what I feel, yeah. you know, really strongly about that. that it's just just bringing an awareness, and um, and and we can see from those programs like one board every minute that there isn't that. <laughs> no, there is. No, you know, it's like I, no, 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 complete lack of. I mean, just extraordinary lack. Of, what? Where does that come from? Pro- possibly. I mean, I don't know, but possibly because of our own experience of our own birth. Yes. Yeah. So to us, it's the norm. It's traumatic. It's the norm. It's the so norm. So that's what we've got. Uh, and, yeah. that, and that's certainly true when, for mums, you know, um, 
from there, I mean, I think this is why it's important for mums themselves to kind of heal, try and heal their own experience yes. of their own yes. of their own birth, because yes. it, they will tend to, as we know, things tend to go down. Yeah. And then ancestrally, it will hand on, and, yeah. that, and the whole process will move. So yeah. there's this. It would be really wonderful. I suppose maybe we both yearn for the day when the respect between the medical profession and the complementary therapy line and and, yeah. and the 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 that deep understanding and we need them both but if they could just begin to fuse more would be beautiful it'd be, it'd be it would be perfection because both are needed aren't they of course absolutely yeah. and and there are these needs for interventions but but um it 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 is just i mean you know for example with the due date thing yeah i mean i know a lot of midwives who who are work slightly outside the box, you know, yes. who are fantastic at bringing mums on if they're a bit late. Mm. And, 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 on, <laughs> and there's and a lot you can be do done, that. isn't there? Yeah, huge Beautiful. Amount. Maybe work on the yes. feet, reflexology, just just tweaking the body yeah. no, to I encourage was... it to go into free form. Yeah, and, and also there's, there's a huge amount that you can do um, for the mum before. Yeah. But, I mean, in terms of our work, Bowen yeah. work, yeah. craniosacral work, yeah. Getting to do yoga, yes, you know, yoga uh, uh, and pregnancy, uh, beautiful. Yeah, understanding coming inside simple. themselves almost, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Coming, becoming aware. Becoming aware. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, bodily aware. Once we're bodily aware, we yeah. can work with it, can't yeah. we? Let but it I mean, go. You know, I, Otherwise, we're holding on to the baby maybe for too long. Yes. Yeah. Oh. And antenatal yoga. Yeah. Yeah. And and there are certain key things. You know, we, we talked about four example. When the baby's born, when it's, when it's pulled, we tend to, you know, hold here. But well, that's the key thing for mums as well, being able to let go through here. Because, True. again, when we get frightened and, and unfortunately... And in pain. In our culture, yes. And in pain. We, it, we still, tighten up. Yeah, we tighten up. And particularly we tighten up here. And we which reverse, is like the worst we reverse thing what we're trying do. to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah so there's some, there's some simple things. I mean, I think, I think antenatal yoga is fantastic. Mm. You know, Pilates is fantastic. Mm. And understanding... Uh, again, positioning. I mean, mm. you know, again, hospitals are getting better at this now. Yeah. And water births and things yes. like that. Fantastic. Um, to certain positions where you open up the whole yes. pelvis are not difficult. By you know, not lying flat on your right, back. Exactly. Not, where we came in at. Which is where we came in at. Yes. And, and other simple things. Yes. Like, you see, most people don't know that if you, if, uh, it's really key that you keep off things like refined foods, particularly in the later stages of pregnancy, because if you're on a diet of refined foods, it stops mm. you the uptake of prostaglandins. And prostaglandins are a key thing that gets the contractions going. Okay. So, you know, and that that's not talked about hardly anywhere. Mm. And it's a very simple thing. For mums a bit overdue, Get them on. Well, they should get be on a good diet. diet right. anyway. Get their diet right, but, but you can enhance it. So mm. we need this information, John. We'll have to have some of your book titles at the end, yeah, so, that, course, so that know. mothers can be educated. But yeah. I do know that classes, antenatal classes, and as you say, yoga and Pilates. There's a lot of knowledge through the people who run those Huge classes, knowledge, which is yeah. greatly helping mothers yeah, and babies, yeah. and and um, all, all sorts of relax, relaxation techniques Absolutely. that they can learn, so that they are bodily aware and they, yeah. their birth can be a joyful and. It as joyful, beautiful it, it is be. when you watch the animals built born in the fields. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and I think the key thing is for mums not to knock themselves over the head and about, you know, because <laughs> it's so easy for mums to go into guilt, isn't it? And, that, and that's hope. There's well, no, we only do our best to the absolutely. knowledge available to and us. And there is so a huge amount you can do, that's the and point. And you can do, you can, a, there's remedial work afterwards, yeah. isn't there, John, for yeah. mothers and babies and for yeah. us all. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Fascinating. Good. Yeah, great. I don't knowledge. know if you've covered all those I'd questions. I, I, I think I have. Is there anything you feel well, we I might have we missed? We didn't really talk. And this is going back to the beginning. Yes. We didn't really talk that much about about um, memory, did we? Because that's quite a controversial no. area. Well, we, quite... the first one of the first questions we jumped of you was, "When does this memory arise in the process?" But you, you sort of. I think we've covered it in a way. Yes. One. One. Keep one, one little thing I'd like to say about yes. that because we tend to think about and, and, and David Chamberlain brings this up actually in, in his new book mm. I was talking to him about it when he came to Bristol recently um, about because again we tend our, our, our current understanding it seems to be that when you talk about memory and remembering things you know mm. I mean again when we look at 
the way that we treat babies. Like, we still tend to think that babies don't won't remember much. Mm-hmm. This is why we treat people like why we treat babies in the way we do that because you know the the general thing is that well okay so a baby might feel a bit of pain with this that and the other but it won't really remember it it mm-hmm. won't have a long term effect um, and likewise in the womb we don't tend to think of babies as being these conscious creatures and and so David Chamberlain talks a lot about the question is because he's done a lot of work with re- regression okay. you know yeah. bringing people back and, and it appears that they can remember, as we said, things very distinctly. So the question is, well, where, where do memories reside? Yeah. And this is something that Rupert Sheldrake talks <laughs> a lot about as well, actually, which is it's very fascinating. Because if you really look at the science behind where do we hold memory, it's not at all clear. Nobody's ever been able to find any bits Not of the neural Not a specific part, no. no that hold so it. where is it? <laughs> where is it? Yeah. And then you get these weird things happening. Like, for example, he cites these people with hydrocephalus. Yeah. Who yeah. have hardly any neural tissue. Like, yeah. there was a guy yeah, okay. he mentioned in America who had only a millimetre of neural tissue okay. in his brain. The so rest was fluid. So where was the memory? And, and, and he was highly intelligent, managed to get a degree. Yeah. yeah it was very interesting. So it isn't all so, up here. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly so, yeah. isn't up here, is it, John? <laughs> no, we don't know yeah. exactly where it is. Oh. I mean, where it's held. Uh, and so, so the question is that David Chamberlain asked, which I think is very interesting, is how, how can, uh, how can a, a fetus have memory when it hasn't got any neural tissue which is very interesting but it seems to be able to fascinating do you have an answer John? no we don't have an answer do <laughs> no, we? but that's a nice thing is it no. we don't have an answer no well i think that's no. beautiful to me exactly. that's the more than exactly. that we don't know what about <laughs> exactly. which we're always trying to find out about <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> which is hence the, yeah, the so tv program, program. we're trying yeah, to find yeah. about we these have, more we than have things. a more of an open mind yeah, and actually a, really question yeah. these yeah. assumptions yeah. Because there are lots and lots of assumptions yeah. that we have about yeah. this. Really. Makes us hungry for more. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely, Good. John. Thank, Thank you. you. That's fascinating. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.